cakes. Welcome to Water Damage with your host, Gail Mancha. This is my chronological discussion of the King of the Seven Seas, Aquaman. Disclaimer, I will be actively getting and collecting issues as we go, and I'm trying to only cover issues that I have a physical copy of or are in a collected edition. I'm going to try to stray away from digital because I love physical media, but the DC Universe Infinite app would be a great way to keep up with the podcast. Be sure to hit the follow button on Spotify or preferred platform to get episodes as soon as they drop. In today's episode, we'll be covering Adventure Comics 264, Aquaman and his Sea Police. Links will be in the podcast notes. This issue was released on July 30th, 1959. It's odd that this one came out before 263, according to LeagueofComicGeeks.com. Let's take a look back at what else was happening that day in history. Do it again! On this day, the best-selling single was Lonely Boy by Paul Anka, and top of the box office was The Nun's Story. This is the exact same as our last episode. TV shows for children and teams have changed to Father Knows Best, Mighty Mouse Playhouse, Tom Terrific, and Felix the Cat. Hula hoops are now among the popular children's toys. Lonely Boy is a pretty good song. Still has that 50s feel to it, but there's some clarity to it that appeals to me more than previous songs. If you're familiar with the song or top movie, let me know on Spotify. On the app, at least, you have a Q&A section where you can reply to my question of what you think of this issue. You can do it there, social media, or even the YouTube VOD for this episode. I've only heard of Mighty Mouse, and I actually saw one episode of Felix the Cat while visiting family in Mexico when I was younger. I don't remember anything about it, but if there's any voice acting, it would have been in Spanish, and I don't speak it, so haha, <laughs> funny cartoon. I think my only experience with hula hoops would have been like elementary gym class, and even then, probably not much. That's a taste of what the world was like when Adventure Comics 264 was released. I'm reading this thanks to Showcase Presents Aquaman Volume 1, but it's also available via the Aquaman Archives Volume 1. As a recording, the issue is not available on the DC Universe Infinite app, so besides those two sources, I'm not sure where else you can find it commercially available. Just like other issues we've covered so far, Adventure Comics is an anthology of stories, and this is the second of three. Per usual, it's either middle or last. Nothing's beating out the Golden Boy. Again, it's called Aquaman and his Sea Police. The calf fin is green in close-ups and black in wider shots, presumably because they're considered to be in shadows. Interestingly, his gloves are now green to match his pants. That said, the Showcase Presents series is in black and white, so if that's your only access to it, you wouldn't know. This story was written by Robert Bernstein and penciled by Ramona Fradden. This cover at Adventure Comics focuses on the Superboy story, so we'll focus on the first panel of the Aquaman story. The Aquaman name is written in a reddish-orange that's become commonplace. We're at a port with a small boat named Matt's Groceries in the background, a smiling guy in a canoe behind in the distance. There's a buoy in the water that says, no left turn. In the foreground, we see a boat driven by two young adults that two octopi are restraining back, keeping them from driving off. The octopi look pissed. From behind the deck is Aquaman with a star badge over his costume and a black and white police cap. There's a sign right next to where he's standing that says, Sea Police Station. Aquaman thinks, Hot Rod Speedboats can't race around this town anymore. Not with my sea police patrolling the streets, restoring law and order to New Venice. In the text box, apparently, a random city in America has become a duplicate of Venice, hence the name New Venice. All the streets have turned into canals is one problem, but with it is floods of lawlessness, a situation that can be best met by Aquaman and his sea police. I really hope this has something to do with Danny the Street, which, as the name implies, is a sentient street. He can make room in the universe for himself to exist, and you can tell he likes to be festive by accessorizing himself with streamers and balloons. I don't know how or why Danny exists, but there he is. Since this comic isn't on the DC Universe Infinite app, I can't read you guys the About This Book section. After the break, we'll summarize the issue. Is Aquaman finished? Can you make it to the bathroom before we return with part two of the show? What it do guys, Manjame here, and if you like board games, especially deck building games, you should check out at Team underscore Thunder on YouTube. 
There we have unboxings and games of Legendary, a Marvel deck building game, the DC deck building game, the Transformers deck building game, and many more. That's also where you can find VODs for this and Accelerated Visions, a Spider-Man 2099 podcast where you can directly leave a comment and we can discuss the issues. The Superman Aquaman Hour of Adventure, featuring Aquaman, King of the Seven Seas, and your favorite comic book superheroes in their own adventure stories. It's 60 minutes of thrills and fun, next on most of these stations. We start the issue with a topo riding Aquaman paying a visit to the newly named New Venice. It was a coastal city until six months ago when a sea quake flooded the streets. He meets with the mayor and he explains to Aquaman that the city has changed for the worse. One change happening right to your left is some people tossing litter into the streets or canals. Aquaman simply replies with a hmm. Behind them, the mayor points out that many people in hot rod boats speed and ignore all tragic signals, which I think is a typo and he means traffic signals. I found this typo in both the DC showcase and the original comic. If you're wondering, what about the police? Well, the mayor has a response. Everybody's taking advantage of the conditions. Something must be done, Aquaman. I'm helpless, so is the police force. We can't cope with the new situation. Well, alright, he doesn't really explain it, and we don't actually get to see any policemen in this issue. Maybe he could have said that they had to divert funds that would have gone into the police to waterproofing buildings or to the DMV so that they can issue boat licenses. People started taking advantage of the fact that there's no police enforcement to do whatever they like. At any rate, Aquaman thinks out loud by saying, hmm, I intended to spend a few days here. Maybe something can be done during that time. I, I guess he expected to do nothing. Which is funny because he's not saying he's going to spend any extra time here to resolve what's going on. Whether he's busy or unwilling to spend more time there, we'll never know. But he gets to work and swims away. When he arrives back hours later, he's riding skis being pulled by dolphins and accompanied by sharks, swordfish, and Topo riding a whale and seagulls. Though now he's wearing a police star badge, which the mayor hadn't given him, so it must be from Aquaman's personal stash. It doesn't take long for someone in the city to begin breaking laws. We see a boat speeding in a two knots only street, so Aquaman sends Slinky the seal to stop it. Previously, we'd only seen Topo on a whale, but whales are big, why not? Slinky jumps off the whale, wink wink, and stuffs a pack of seaweed into the twirling propeller. Freeze. This seems incredibly dangerous and unnecessary for Slinky, but I guess there's no police union for sea creatures. In fact, we'll find a reason here why I think this is so in a bit. Back to the scene, the boat comes to an abrupt stop, sending one man flying, yee, and the other one to hit the windshield, clunk. Later, we see Aquaman having gone to the scene after having ridden skis pulled by dolphins, now writing a ticket for the young men. Thanks to my pet seal, you didn't kill anyone. I'm giving you a ticket, but if you're caught speeding again, your boat license will be revoked. Right here is where I think it makes more sense that Aquaman will send out Slinky for the unsafe work. He isn't regarding sea life as friends or equal, but as a pet. It's downplayed, but I think it's important and this line of thinking will persist at least until the Bronze Age. Gulp. Okay, Aquaman, but, but how did your seal stop us? Very simply by fouling your propeller with seaweed. It just so happens that a man wearing goggles in a speedboat overhears this and thinks, so that's how Aquaman's anti-speed squad operates. <laughs> I'll speed all I like. I'll just get a more powerful motor. There's no obvious time lapse, but since he thinks he'll get a more powerful motor, then it's after that he's done so. So he has to go do it. He speeds past Aquaman, who sends Slinky to stop this hot rod racer. After Slinky dives into the water, he thinks, <laughs> it'll take more than seaweed to stop me. When Slinky tries the old seaweed trick, it just snaps. Immediately, Aquaman knows he's got an extra powerful motor, so he sends another sea policeman after him. Soon, the speeding boat begins to rise above the water. It's a whale that's lifted the boat into the air. But this doesn't really take into consideration that this is a more powerful motor that would be cutting into the whale unless we're saying that the skin is so strong that the extra power from propellers have no effect. Due to his actions, Aquaman has the whale take him and his boat to the judge where he'll lose his license. Maybe now he'll learn some respect for the speed laws. Meanwhile, on the new Venice ferry, a man's pocket has been picked. Thelma, as he calls her, says... I'll call the octopus detective. I've heard Aquaman's sea police are very clever. 
Now, even though she says that she will call them, it looks like there's already an octopus on the scene. Thelma catches on quick because she narrates that the octopus simultaneously checks the pockets of eight suspects before they can escape. One man tries to run away, but the octopus grabs him by the ankle and finds the wallet in his pocket. Here's where we get our quote of the issue. What's the matter, Aquaman? I don't know. The fish are trying to tell me something. There's my wallet. Yes, sir. In this town, the long arm of the law reaches out with too many arms for pickpockets to succeed. That man really took the time to make an octopus pun. No matter what happens, I bet that guy has a pun to make, and I respect that. Later on that day, as Aquaman is making an inspection of the area, he sees people on the boat named Adventure 2 littering. Aquaman thinks, I've warned them about littering. Now I'll teach them a lesson. This lesson is to get the seagulls to bombard the people that are littering with stuff that they've been littering back onto their ship. I don't think what it's dropping is literally what they've been littering because there's at least 16 pieces of litter in that one panel. As if to uprightly disagree with me, Aquaman tells him correct. It's a dose of your own medicine and you'll learn to keep the canals clean. Immediately afterward, Aquaman gets a swordfish to clean up the litter dropped anywhere aside from the boat. Soon he's sure that the canal will be sparkling clean. The criminals aren't done though, we have another crime. This time there's a boat of people fishing out of fishing season, meaning the fish are too young. Again, he's seen them before and find them, but now he'll use the other tactics. Shortly two men are excited because they both have a bite and judging by the pull, they must be big catches. However, when they pull their catches in, they have junk. Aquaman had instructed swordfish to hang crates, banners, even barrels to the lines. If they don't quit now, he warns, they'll hang more refuge on their lines. Crime abounds because there's a scuba diver putting a gun to a lady demanding her jewels. <gasps> a thief in a skin diving costume. Help, police. Lucky for her, Aquaman's on a whale in earshot, so the crooks in this town have adapted to the water. I'll fix this rogue. While making his getaway, sharks surround him and Aquaman pulls out the old trick to teach him he can't steal with his sea police patrolling the flooded streets. Aquaman starts swiftly swimming around the frightened thug. Vroosh! I'll create a whirlpool. That'll stop him dead. Odd choice of words, but it's important to point out that he's knocked out dizzy and not dead dead. Once again, the trick is the same one he used against the corrupt politician in the last issue and what Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy do in Spongebob. While holding the man, he thinks, he's so dizzy now, he'll be glad to be arrested and booked at my police station. Later that evening, as Aquaman's about to leave, a man informs Aquaman that the water is receding so New Venice will soon become a waterless city like before. Another person says, Please, Aquaman, help us. We've grown to love our canals and waterways. Wait here, I'll see what I can do. Aquaman goes underwater and looks around the surrounding area. He remembers that the town was originally deluged by a sea quake, so he had a hunch that the sea floor must have cracked again. Of course he's right, and it is. So his sea police bring in items like boats, wood, bottles, rocks, etc. to plug the crack like a plug in a bathtub. An hour later, and the job's finished. The canals are safe, and the city can remain named as New Venice. The next morning, the citizens give Aquaman and his sea police a ticker tape parade. Once again, Aquaman's riding skis that are being pulled, presumably, by dolphins, but is actually being pulled by something off screen. There's swordfish, a whale, and an octopus present, at least. Throwing the police badge to the mayor, Aquaman says, Here, mayor, I won't need this police chief badge anymore. The mayor replies, Thanks, Aquaman. You and your sea police were wonderful. We'll always remember how you taught New Venice to become a model sea city. The end. After the break, we'll go over some thoughts and feelings about the issue. Wait a minute. That was no joke. Somebody tried to kill me. That or we're not paying Mr. Slippery enough. Holy Neptune's trident. This has to be the work of the Legion of Doom. Hey, there's an echo inside my head. Echo. 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 Uh, you echo. okay, Aquaman? Echo. Echo. What? Oh, no, no problem. This comic continues the never-ending trend of Aquaman being presented with a problem and using his aquatic friends to pretty easily and quickly solve it. I hope Aquaman stops referring to sea life as pets because that doesn't really come off well to me. Even the criminals said that they were his sea friends and meanwhile he's like, no, no, they're pets. It makes him feel less sentient, but that octopus solved the case of the missing wallet all by himself, as the pun-making man pointed out. 
Which brings me to another important point. I think there is a glaring issue at the end, and that it's many of the lessons that Aquaman taught were to not do crimes with the Aquaman and his sea police around. Thing is, he's leaving today, so as soon as they leave, they can go right back to being bad, speeding, littering. The aforementioned pun man said the long arm of the law reaches out with too many arms for the pit pockets to succeed, but now they're leaving too. What's to stop them from starting right up again? Now they can blend into the crowd and just get away. The police were powerless before, so there's no observable change in that. In fact, we never even saw a single policeman, so besides what the mayor says, we have no reason to believe they even have a police force. What do you think? Did you read the comic? Did I get something wrong? If I did and you guys let me know, I'll include correction section in the next episode and I'll credit the user. Let's continue the discussion on social media and the YouTube VOD. You can find me at Manjame Thunder on Twitter and at Team underscore Thunder on YouTube. If you're looking for another podcast to listen to and want to learn more about the Spider-Man of the future, check out Accelerated Visions, a Spider-Man 2099 podcast on Spotify and anywhere you can find podcasts. Manjame out. Oh, man. Glad that stopped before things got worse.